In this part, we will talk about another very important viral STD and that is AIDS. Now, this is caused by a single stranded RNA virus. We call it SSRNA virus. That means RNA viruses which are responsible for causing the diseases and such viruses which have RNA as genetic material, they are known as retrovirus. Now, in case of retrovirus, along with the genetic material, there is one more thing which is required and that is a special enzyme. We already know that in normal case, it is DNA which gets transcribed to form mRNA and mRNA is then translated to form the proteins. So these two processes or steps are known as, this one is known as transcription and the second one is known as translation. Now in case of retroviruses, the genetic material is RNA. This process that is DNA to mRNA to protein is known as central dogma and central dogma is universal. That means this is the only way in which a protein would be synthesized. So what about the organisms or retroviruses where RNA is the genetic material? First, the DNA has to be produced and then central dogma would be followed. So there is one additional step that is RNA to DNA synthesis. DNA to RNA was called transcription. Now this is RNA to DNA. This step is known as reverse transcription. And for this, there is a special enzyme which is required and that enzyme is known as reverse transcriptase. So in case of AIDS causing virus, that is HIV, which is a single stranded RNA virus, if we draw the structure, this is the protein capsid. Inside the protein is the single stranded RNA and there are two single stranded RNAs separate. Along with this RNA, there is this reverse transcriptase. So this thread which we are drawing here is RNA and this is the enzyme reverse transcriptase. This is found in all retroviruses because first DNA has to be synthesized and then only central dogma would take place. In case of HIV, outside this protein capsid, there is one more layer and this layer has the special type of glycoproteins which are known as GP120. So these are GP120. This GP120 is antigenic. That means it acts as an antigen. And we know that if our body receives any form of antigen, it produces antibodies. Then the question arises, if this is acting as antigen, why our body is not able to produce antibodies? The reason is that this GP120 remains masked. That means it is covered by a layer which is non-antigenic. So this antigen gets exposed only for a very short period of time when the virus infects the host cell. We'll come to that in, in a minute. So this HIV, which is this retrovirus, has RNA as genetic material plus the reverse transcriptase. If we talk about the first case which was reported. So first case was reported in 1981 in USA and the first case in India, first case in India was reported in 1986 in Chennai. So this is how the uh, cases were reported. So first in 81 and in India, the first one was in 1986. December 1st is 
observed as World AIDS Day. On this day, awareness campaigns and making people aware of what complications this disease has, how to prevent it. So those things are uh, told to people and this is how the day is observed. And this World AIDS Day and this organization also has a symbol and that symbol is actually a red ribbon which is in the form of this loop or a cross. So this red ribbon represents the AIDS day. So this is uh, one important thing that we have to remember. The day which is observed as the World AIDS day. And these two years when this disease or this case was reported for the first time. Now coming to the symptoms. Initial symptoms are very simple and common type. Very common symptom is mild fever, mild infections, loss of weight. These are very, very common symptoms which normally we ignore. If there is a little feverish condition, we ignore that probably it is because of weather, probably because it is because of some kind of infection. If there is weight loss, if somebody says that you've lost weight, we just take it, you know, in a very light manner. But these could be the initial symptoms of AIDS. What happens when the complications start? Complications result into increase in severity of these infections. So these infections become very, very severe. It can also lead to cancer. And there are various types of cancers which are caused. The most common is a skin cancer, which takes place only when a person is having this virus. Now, why these kind of symptoms? What exactly is the virus doing? The virus infects the host cell. So, it is going to enter, this virus is going to enter the host cell. Now, host cell is helper T cell. We know that in our body there are there is immune system and there are two parts. One is cell mediated immune system where there are two types of cells helper cells uh, sorry T cells and B cells. The second is known as humoral immune system where antibodies or immunoglobulins actually work. So how is the infection going to take place? This is the HIV that we have drawn and this is that GP120. GP120 comes in contact with a CD4 protein which is on the helper T cell. When these two things get connected, that is the time when the mask is gone. And when these two things connect, from here the virus is injected into the host cell. So only for a short period of time, this GP120 is unmasked. Only that time, if our body is able to detect it, antibodies will be formed. But it is going to be for a very, very short period of time. Helper cells, as their name tells us, helper cells are going to help some other cells. So helper T cells actually help B cells. They help. B lymphocytes to produce antibodies. So now when helper cells stimulate B cells, our body produces antibodies. But what is going to happen when the virus has infected the host cell? Inside the host, virus is going to multiply. When virus multiplies, then the host cell is going to rupture. That means Helper cells will be ruptured. If helper cell is gone, then there is nothing or no cell which can help the B cells to synthesize antibodies. So basically, our immune system is becoming weaker. And if immune system becomes weaker, we get every kind of infection. Initially, because less helper cells are destroyed, the infection is milder. 
as more and more helper cells get destroyed, the infection gets severe. And that is why the name which is given to the virus is human immunodeficiency virus. And AIDS is acquired immunodeficiency syndrome. Now, when we use the word syndrome, that means there are multiple complications. It is not just one thing which is getting affected. So in this case, because our immune system is getting weaker day by day, everything will get affected and that is why it is called a syndrome. Many a times we talk about words which say that the person is HIV positive. We are not saying that the person has AIDS. HIV positive means the person has the virus, but till that time, the disease is not caused. So the person is having the virus. So there is the ultimately it is good. The person is going to get the disease. But as long as the disease is not manifested, we would ca call that person HIV positive. Once the a helper T cells are destroyed and their number comes below a minimum limit, then we say that the person now has AIDS. And one very serious thing about this is that this virus can cross placenta. So if a pregnant female has this virus, then the virus can cross the placenta and can cause damage or disease to the fetus. Nowadays, drugs are available which can block the movement of the virus through placenta. But for that, the female must be aware that she has the infection. And that is why whenever these pregnant females, they go for investigations and all, this test is definitely performed so that it is known that she is HIV positive or not. So that further precautions can be taken. So this is again a very, very important STD, sexually transmitted disease. And the other part is that it can be through placenta also. So mother through or through mother, uh, it can go to the fetus also. So we now know the symptoms also, certain important dates and the structure of the virus also.